So today we're gonna break down how I got from shots like this, straight out the camera, to shots like this. We're gonna go through my entire editing process, what I look for, how I edit, and the whole nine yards. Also, I'm a little concerned for these two lights right here, cause right there, there, that, there-ish, they might die, I don't know. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I do is open up Lightroom Classic. Um, there are a couple different versions of Lightroom. There's Lightroom Classic, there's just Lightroom Mobile. It's on your phone, it's on your iPad, it's on your tablet. And um, the reason why I use Classic is because there's a few more features available and um, that's a that's a picture for a thumbnail for my wife's YouTube channel, in which case you should um you should you should subscribe to that because we it's been a while since we uploaded, but it's it's coming back. I promise it's coming back. Lightroom Classic offers more features than the regular Lightroom does on your iPad or tablet or even on your own computer. Um, I don't really know what those features are off the top of my head, but uh, it, it's better. So I'm going to open up a new catalog. So when it comes to importing the pictures, um, I often copy as DNG. It makes it so that your picture is still in a raw format, but it doesn't take up as much space in your hard drive or in your computer because um, these are really hefty files. Uh, one picture is about, well, it says right here, one picture is 48 megabytes. Um, and I shot maybe 120, 150 pictures in this shoot. Do the math, I'll probably put it on the screen somewhere for you. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of space and I'm not trying to deal with all that. So I copy as DNG and then I just look to see what shots were really good and which ones were um, savable. Sometimes when you shoot and look, you look at the LCD on the back of your camera, you see it looks fine, but then you get to your computer and you're like, this thing's blurrier than a mug and I don't really, I can't, I can't use this. If you shoot raw, you can you can probably save it, and most most times you can you can save it with some faith, trust, and pixie dust. So now I'm gonna go through all the pictures that I'm going to import. So when I shoot, a lot of the time I already have an end goal in mind for what I want to do with the picture. That vision and that idea often comes from when I look through all my pictures and I pick which ones I want to edit. I can kind of see where this can go uh, before I even really do anything. What's really cool too with editing, especially when there's no time limit or time crunch, it's really cool to, to just experiment, create some virtual copies, and just, just try new things. There was one set of photos that I shot where um, I had no time limit and I wanted to just make something really cool. And the original picture looked really great and it really inspired me. And I'll put the original uh, here ish so you could see it and I really just wanted to see what I could do what settings I could mess with and edit in a different way than how I normally did I ended up with this shot here so you see the original and compare that to what I ended up with and it it looks pretty good so here I can see everything that I shot and I'm gonna be jumping around quite a bit so if you see at the bottom I'm not starting at picture number one don't worry about it. So I'm gonna start with this picture here. Um, I can see a couple things already that I want to do with it. Um, the darks are a little bit too dark and they don't have much detail in them. Also, I can see right up here, for, uh, secured by ADT. ADT don't pay me, so ADT gonna go away. Um, and then just upping some colors, upping some shadows, making uh, Carl stand out here a little more. Also, I shoot everything on a Nikon D850. And the lens I used for this shoot was a Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 lens. So uh, first thing I did was popped out the lens correction, got rid of the vignetting around the edge. You can see that right there. Uh, and next I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna make this straight before I even correct color or anything. So I'm just gonna rotate this around here or so. Uh, you'll notice that this left edge of the couch is cut off because I rotated it. So I'm just gonna slide this back over so I can see more of the couch and kind of center up our subjects right here. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter, just increase the exposure just a little, not anything crazy. This already has quite a bit of contrast and I wanna have a little more control over what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pull down my contrast a little bit and then up my shadows. It already looks pretty different. The next thing I kind of do is, um, it's not anything really to talk through. I just kind of play around with different settings and see what things do. Um, I, I'm seeing here, as I pull up my whites, everything looks a little um, a little purple, almost a little magenta, and I don't want that much magenta in the shot. So I'm gonna pump down the magenta and actually uh, cool this thing off a little bit. Let's go 35, let's see, oh, no, wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> wrong way uh 1500 you lying 2000 my lowest yeah i'm gonna have this about here or so 
yeah, we're gonna do that. Pull down the black a little bit. Increase my clarity. Clarity, I did not say that word at all. Clarity. How do I say the word clarity without being clear? Clarity. Clarity, Add a little bit of texture. And maybe up my shadows a bit more. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna go over to my tone curves and pull down just a little, not a whole lot, just happy, happy adjustments, happy adjustments, happy times. And already I'm kind of seeing details here. I kind of wanna pull his face out a little bit. If you notice, his skin tone is about the same color as the brick, which is something I definitely wasn't fully conscious of when I was shooting. But that can be changed, that's a really easy fix. Um, also, the color of the shirt blends and matches a bit much with the brick as well. I'm actually gonna go to calibration and skip a couple steps. If you notice too, sometimes I really don't know how something is going to affect the picture. You probably heard me say, I'm going to try this and I'm gonna slide this all the way to 100 and just see what it does and see what it looks like. I don't always know exactly what I'm doing, which I know you always want to hear from a professional photographer, but every picture is different. And so all these different sliders and effects are going to affect your picture differently. You'll probably notice that I don't use presets because of that same reason. I believe every picture is different. Even if two shots are almost the exact same, those two pictures are still different. So I want to edit them differently. Not to say I don't ever copy settings over because I do and that saves a lot of time. But when starting off, I always start from scratch to see where this can go. Although it does probably take more time than I'd like, but. I'm gonna smoothen some details over. I'm gonna click on his face here and enlarge it. I'm going to smooth a couple things out. You may, you may even be like, yo, I don't even know what you're doing. Basically, some things I saw in the picture were a little bit too, I don't know, the texture of it was weird. So I'm just going to smooth a couple things over. Some colors, I want a little more color. But I don't want to go crazy. I want like mood, I want tone. Yeah, okay, so mood, mood, mood. Mood, <laughs> mood. So I'll kind of see what this is gonna do. Uh, let's see here. This kind of fixes a little bit of the tone issues. Uh, let's see, my shadows. I think I want a little more greens in this than what I've been having. Maybe just about here. Uh, probably bring a little more like white back into this somehow. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe I won't even do that. No, 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 no. We can't, no. I, I think that's actually fine. I'm gonna do something to take out some of the green elsewhere. I'm just gonna play with this setting here. I actually like it up just a little bit. And um, just increase some mood. We're going to take down uh, the intensity, the color intensity on the shadows. Um, and already that's quite a bit. Of, it almost looks, almost looks kind of filmish. Bring that green down just a little bit. And uh, no, let's not touch that at all. Actually, let's touch it just a little. Let's go there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Calibration, let's slide this back. Oh, no. Ooh. Uh, actually, hold up, that's kind of sick. What I find really funny is that I said I'm gonna go through my entire process. And this is my process. This is, <laughs> it's me like, yo, this is cool. What's this gonna do to the picture? And re me really just messing around and seeing what things do and see what makes me happy. <laughs> Cause I just wanna be happy, that's, that's it. I want my pictures to inspire me. I want my pictures to inspire others and I want people to feel like they're actually there or that they can almost like, almost hear something from a picture. I think that's really powerful whenever a photographer is able to capture that, whether that's in a, in a concert, in a, um, in a photo shoot like this, or when they're just making a statement with their photography or historical, ph whatever. It's so cool whenever you just, you're just drawn in by the picture and it tells a story no matter what's going on. That's super inspiring to me and I love it and it's great. So already, if I reset everything and you see it, you see where we started and now you can see where we're at currently. With this, there's a few more things I want to change. Like I mentioned this um, ADT sign up here. Also, I noticed it a little bit later, but um, this big, orange uh this was a lamp that was on in the studio and i'll try to take that out there also i'll see about killing some of the uh the blues that were outside here and making this a little more 
a little more moody. And I don't think I mentioned what this shoot was. This was actually a shoot I did for uh, an artist named C West. Um, we had a couple ideas that we wanted to execute. And so we went to Unlimited Studio in Atlanta, which is super dope. And y'all should go check it out if you're a photographer in the Atlanta area. The rates are cheap. Uh, the space is dope. The staff is helpful. You should go. And I'll drop a link somewhere. The link's right there. And so now here we are. So this next tool, this is something that Lightroom Classic added in I think their most recent major update. When you select the masking uh, button and you hit create new mask, you now have the option to select a subject, which Lightroom will detect for you. And most times it does it pretty well. Come on, prove me right, prove me right, prove me right. Yes, sir. It's not perfect. You can see some areas where it kind of lost the mask a little bit or kind of overextended a little bit, but um, under decent lightings and in most conditions, it finds your subject pretty well. And that's something that just saves. Ugh. It saves so much time. <laughs> it saves so much time. I'm going to actually invert this mask right there because I want to affect everything that's around him. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm only affecting what I want to affect. So we're going to subtract um, the mask here, take it off of his shoe. Now you could also add this mask around your subject manually, and that's what I did in the past, but this, more times than not, just saves so much extra time. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're actually gonna cut it there. Cool. Take this off. And I'm going to pull that down, add some contrast. Maybe not kill that many of my highlights. Maybe even change a little bit of a color temperature. Not anything crazy. Just kind of want to see what this is going to look like. What's really cool about editing, something that I love, is that nobody's right and nobody's wrong. So if you, an established photographer, are like, what are you doing to these edits? I would do something entirely different. Well, you're right but you're also wrong. And what's interesting is I'm a, I'm right. And I'm also wrong too. There's no, nobody's right. There's no right answer, no wrong answer. It's all up to artists expression and interpretation. It's all up to the eye of the artist and no one's right, no one's wrong. And I think that's such a cool thing to, uh, to explore. So I pulled the picture down a little more to increase the focus on C West to make it look like he's even, he's even more of the subject in the picture than he was before. If we look at this and we look back at where we came from, um, all the other settings around him are cool, but obviously he should be the focus. So I needed to put the emphasis, emphasis on him. So here we are. And I'm pretty happy with this end product. Hopefully all this has made sense. Um, I know a lot of it was me just clicking buttons and being like, yo, this looks good. This makes me happy. Let's do this. But that just goes to show that, again, there's no perfect formula. There's no right or wrong way to go about editing pictures. It's all about you, the photographer, and what you want to do with the picture and what makes you happy, quite honestly, with the picture and with the art that you're creating. So don't think that it's some kind of magic formula, some kind of thing that you have to do. Like, no, I've been doing this now professionally for almost five years and I'm still just like, what's this gonna do, you know? So, so there's no need to be intimidated by all these features and all these buttons and all these different sliders and things. And honestly, what I did when I started, I just kind of messed around. I was like, yo, what is this gonna do? I don't know what this is gonna do. We're gonna click it, we're gonna slide it, we're gonna press it, and we're gonna see what it does. And I'm gonna learn. And I think that's a great place to start at for those who maybe don't know exactly what they're doing yet. Just, just mess around, just have fun. Just have fun, see what things do, learn by trying. So, there you go. And this battery's gonna die, so I'm definitely gonna have to change it while, uh... It died. Died? You're hot, my gosh.